morning here in East Texas. It's overcast, it's 65 degrees. This is the kind of weather that's good to work in. I just have my thin coat on and I'll talk about this thing in the future. It's awesome. Uh, what we've got today is a little house repair. And so our house is wood sided. And uh, wood sided houses are constant maintenance. You need to keep up with it all the time so water doesn't get in. So stick around with us and we're going to show you how to install a drip edge today. All right, everyone, we're up here at the edge of the roof and we had this uh, new roof installed as part of our negotiation on purchasing the house. It was at an extreme uh, lower price uh, for us and the company we hired was the most professional in the area and they should have done a professional job but what do we see here so they replaced some of the rotten uh, decking roof decking for us they replaced it with oh, let's see if I can get a shot on here oops sorry for banging the camera they replaced it with OSB OSB is a cheap product and if water gets on it, it gets destroyed pretty easily. Um, especially this, it looks like 3 8 So, what they didn't do, they failed to do, is put a drip edge on this. Now, yeah, the shingles are overlapping by about an inch and a quarter. That's all fine and good, but if water decides to come around well, let's here we go come around this shingle and through what's called capillary action draw itself back into the end of the OSB here that's a huge problem because this OSB will drink up water like crazy and you don't want that because then we're gonna have to replace this again and that's ridiculous I do not know why they didn't put a drip edge on here it's irritating that they didn't, but we need to do that so water doesn't get back. It's a, a piece of metal flashing uh, that covers the end here. So if water draws back on this shingle into it, it hits the metal and, and comes down. So uh, very important to keep water out of your house. Now there's some other places on this house that water is getting into. We're going to do those projects in the future. One project I've got that's pretty big here is the deck. You can see a green hue to it. It sits under the trees, and this is East Texas, and it's humid here, and it's wet here. And so we're going to need to take care of that. We'll be doing that in the future, but that's way too big of a project and too expensive to do right now. So over here, we have got our, oop, in front of the camera, our metal drip edge. We're going to tuck that under the end of the shingles. We've got to pull the shingles up on the side, and we're going to, nail it down with just some roofing nails and uh, you know that will take care of the problem you can seal it on the ends but we're not going to do that I think it'll be completely fine with just uh, just nailing it on the edge keeping that water from getting into the edge of that also I think we're probably going to also tackle maybe or maybe not you might not see it in this video but maybe today we're going to tackle these uh, gable end uh, boards, uh, these gable and fascia boards here, they were installed improperly by the previous homeowner. I think I've talked about in other videos, you really need to know, okay, you don't need to know what you're doing, but you need to do your research and then you need to do it to the best of your ability uh, and do it correctly and do it 100% or else you're going to have problems. You can't do it half A, okay? You can't do it half-hearted. You can't do it rushed do a good job a proper job so up here all right we're gonna see if this camera will will focus here for you <sighs> on this piece on the end of the soffit here you can see it's cut too short it's cut too small so I don't know if you even saw that or not but right there the end of the underside of the soffit the board right there can get water in it and through that same principle we talked about before water can drip down here and come into the end of the board and get in the house so this board right here this angled board or this 
little triangle piece right here needs to be longer it needs to hang down a little bit farther so the water will come and it won't run back into the house it'll drip off <sighs> so I need to replace that one um, the one up near the front of the house right there has got a couple of issues but it's not as bad as some, the other ones on the other side and we did see this um, during the house inspection obviously we saw it before we bought the house obviously <clears throat> and I knew I could repair it with no problem so we're gonna do those things for you and uh, keep water out of your house alright let's get started on this drip edge all right, real quick, the tools that we need uh, for this project are hammer, obviously, uh, roofing nails. Since our roof is already has shingles on it, we need our handy dandy wonder bar, one of the best tools ever made. We need some sort of small, other small flat prying device. I use a five-in-one tool from my house painting days. Uh, this is a great tool all around. <clears throat> and we need a pair of tin snips. We're going to start by pulling up these shingles. Now you want to be extremely careful. This is what the Wonder Bar is for. You need to be extremely careful you don't pop the uh, nail through the top shingle. If you pop it through the bottom one, you're going to be all right because the other shingles are covering it over the top. But, just be gentle, all right? It's gonna take some work to do. It's gonna take a little time to peel these guys back. It's cool, so these shingles are actually less pliable than normal, if they're obviously heated up. But, uh, just be super, super careful. You want to find any nails? Usually they're back fairly far, uh, at least a couple inches. So here's one I found. We're just going to gently pry it up. Just like that. What's going to be difficult on this cool day is getting these shingles back far enough where I can actually get a nail in to the drip edge over top of this felt paper right here. Once you get these shingles up, you get the uh, this particular shape is it S or Z shape right here. The long portion here with the corrugated part is going to go under the shingle. And the water is going to come off and drip off the edge here. If I'm doing this by myself today, usually it's good to have a partner and help you uh, get it in here a little bit easier. As you can see, it just slides right in under the shingle. I'll have to move my ladder and, and fix that down there and get it under the shingle. And we're just going to drive some nails through the top of our grip edge right here. When I get to the corner, that's what our tin snips are, are for. What we're going to do is this, we're going to cut a little V out right here, wherever we uh, our corner meets right there, or down at the corner. We're going to cut a little V out, bend it around the corner. We're going to cut a straight portion here so that bends on this portion and then it'll wrap nicely around the corner. You won't have a seam at the corner and uh, you're not going to get any water in there. All right, this is a really critical part, right? So I found a nail and uh, we've got back to it with this, uh, this shallow curve on the Wonder Bar and it's coming up perfectly and this is what you want okay don't worry we're gonna push it back down and nail it back down and that's gonna give us the room we need to get in here and 
nail this drip edge, hopefully. If not, you know, I might have to devise a different way of doing that. It looks like I'm going to be so careful of these shingles. Looks like I might be able to get my hammer in there. If not, we're going to try to use the wonder bar on the top of the nail. Hit the wonder bar to push the nail through the drip edge, or we can put the nail in there, hit the top of the shingle, or hit the wonder bar on the top of the shingle. Now, I know what you're saying, that's going to damage the shingle. Not if you distribute the weight properly by hitting the top of the wonder bar. Is it going to knock off some of the some of the granules? Yeah. Uh, is it as bad as walking on the roof? No, but that happens all the time. So we're going to do our best here to try and get our our hammer in here and see what we can do. Not much room to work with at all. Now you're saying, well, why can't we nail through the face? We can, uh, but that's going to be an, another entry point for water. You can nail through it and then cover it with uh, a water sealant, some tar, whatever. And that will work. Uh, this is a better method, but if we can't do that, we're going to end up nailing this thing on the face and, uh, and just sealing it up afterwards. doesn't look like I'm going to be able to swing my hammer in here to get this nail. These shingles are just too thick and too stiff. I can't push them back far enough. I'm going to give this one more shot here. Yeah. Alright folks, this isn't going to work this way. I'm going to try plan two. And I'm going to put the nail in here. Other. Alright, I've got our nail started. And take the wonder bar. I think the best possibility is doing it like this. Distribute the weight. That worked. So we took off two granules. Didn't really damage the shingle at all. We're gonna have to go back and actually tap the other ones in that we, you know, pulled up as well. They don't just really shove down that easily. Some do, some don't because you've already pulled them through the wood. So I'm going to give this thing a few more, a few more taps here. That drove it in, fine. These are 7 eighths of an inch uh, roofing nails. And that'll work, that holds perfectly. It's not sticking up, it's not going to rip through the shingle. Our shingle is, you know, missing a few granules, but not bad. Actually, can't even tell, to be quite honest with you. Looks like nothing happened. We're going to go ahead and we're going to do that for the rest of the way. And we'll show you how to turn that corner. All right, we're getting down to our, our corner down here. And what we're going to do is this is going to slip under the other one, underneath of it. So you want this this new one come up underneath from the, the peak where you start and down. You want each one cons consecutively to run, each top one to run over the bottom one so you don't get any water sliding this way and coming underneath of it. You want the water sliding obviously that way and over the top of this one. So this one will go under here we're going to slide it up probably four, four or five inches. And at our corner down here, we're going to mark it and make our cut. We're going to measure uh, where we need to cut on our corner. I'm just going to mark it with this nail.
Okay, we've got a mark on here. On this particular type of drip edge, I'm just going to cut, snip straight on the bottom portion. And then I'm going to make a bird's mouth. i got my little helper here. Stay back, sweetheart. This is sharp, okay? Okay, you can go on there. I'm going to come right above where the corner is going to come. I'm going to cut a straight line first. Well, that, that's a pretty awkward position. I'm going to move it over here first. Let's do this properly. I'm going to cut in line with our mark. Like that. So you've got this middle portion here that's going to bend around around the corner and to make it a little bit easier to make it a little bit easier I'm going to cut a bird's mouth out of this cut an angle Be really careful. And that way, it's going to bend around that corner perfectly. So if you can see that, cut that bird's mouth. We're going to bend it around our corner. It's going to fit nice, nice and tight around the corner. No water is going to get in that. got our other drip edge in here it's tucked under our first one right here I couldn't show you while I was doing it because it's incredibly flimsy and there's, it's really easier to do it with two people because uh, the gauge of the metal is is uh, not that <coughs> much so it, it flexes all over the place and I really had to manipulate it into place here but we, we're hitting right on the corner it looks good and going down our fascia board on this side. That's pretty much it. Uh, you know, just basically keep the water out of your house and your house is going to last longer. Paint it. This house needs a paint job. Um, seal up with caulk any place that you've got water you think that might come in. And uh, Sorry I'm a little out of the frame here. I'm on the top rung of my ladder because I'm off the deck now. <clears throat> and on the ground. My other ladder's 150 yards that way in the barn. Anyway, we appreciate you watching. If you got any questions, let us know. You know, that's another day on a homestead. And uh, since we've been out here for a little while now, and my three year old daughter is screaming for lunch, we're going to go do that. And uh, I'll do those fascia boards uh, or the end on the gable uh, for you another time. Hope you enjoyed the video. We'd love for you to subscribe to our channel because uh, we'd love for you all to be here and we're trying to show you just these little everyday things that need to be done to your house. If you have this type of house or on a homestead, every day is totally, totally different. And I've got little projects all over the place. We hope we can show you easy ways of how to do them. Um, Next weekend. <laughs> my daughter's loving and uh, wanting to talk on camera as well but uh, stay tuned for more more from us like the video because that helps us out a lot share it on social media share it on blogs uh, you know we appreciate it and we will see you in the next video thank you I think I'm starting to say this on every single video you're going to have 50 things to do every day on your homestead. You have to pick what's most important for that day and just go for it. Every day is so much fun because there are so many different jobs to do. It's never, ever boring. We'd love for you to stay permanently on our channel, so hit that subscribe button. Also, it helps us out greatly. Hit that like button. Uh, like the video. And also, check out the video on the right-hand side of the screen to see how we build our Back to Eden garden. Also, 
go to our blog. We've got a lot going on there. We've got uh, a lot of great articles that we don't cover on our YouTube channel. Also, we've got our Homestead Tool Store, which is super, super important. It has all the tools that we use on a daily basis that we love and are of good quality. So have a great day, and we'll see you on here next time.